21st century the 200-year-old propaganda that the American people control their government has been completely shattered. Both the Bush and Obama regimes have made it unmistakably clear that the American people don't even influence, much less control, the government. As far as Washington is concerned, the people are nothing but chaff in the wind. Polls demonstrate that 65% of the United States population opposes the United States' intervention in Syria. Despite this clear indication of the people's will, the Obama regime is ramping up a propaganda case for more arming of Washington's mercenaries sent to overthrow the secular Syrian government and for a no-fly zone over Syria, which, if Libya is the example, means the United States or NATO aircraft attacking the Syrian army on the ground thus serving as the Air Force of Washington's imported mercenaries, euphemistically called the Syrian rebels. Washington declared some time ago that the red line that would bring Syria under Washington's military attack was the Assad government's use of chemical weapons of mass destruction against Washington's mercenaries. Once this announcement was made, everyone with a brain immediately knew that Washington would fabricate false intelligence, that Assad had used chemical weapons just as Washington presented to the United Nations the intentional lie via Secretary of State Colin Powell that Saddam Hussein in Iraq had dangerous weapons of mass destruction. Remember National Security Advisor Tony Rice's image of a mushroom cloud over American cities? Propagandistic lies were Washington's orders of the day. And they still are. Now Washington has fabricated the false intelligence, and President Obama has announced it with a straight face that Syria's Assad has used sarin gas on several occasions, and that between 100 and 150 of his own people, a euphemism for the United States supplied foreign mercenaries, have been killed by the weapon of mass destruction. Think about that for a minute. As unfortunate as is any death from war, is 100 to 150 deaths mass destruction? According to lowball estimates, the a sponsored foreign mercenary invasion of Syria has cost 93,000 lives, of which 150 deaths amounts to 0.0016. In other words, 92,850 of the deaths did not cross the red line. But 150 did, allegedly. Yes, I know. Washington's position makes no sense. But when has it ever made any sense? Let's stretch our minds just a tiny bit farther. Assad knows about Washington's red line. It has been repeated over and over, in order to create in the minds of the distracted American public, that there is a real, valid reason for attacking Syria. Why would Assad use the proscribed weapons of mass destruction, in order to kill a measly 100 to 150 mercenaries, when his army is mopping up the United States mercenaries without the use of gas? and when Assad knows that the use of gas brings in the United States military against him. As the Russian government made clear, Washington's accusation is not believable. No informed person could possibly believe it. No doubt, many Americans wearing patriotism on their sleeves will fall for Washington's latest lie, but no one else in the world will. Even Washington's NATO puppets calling for attacking Syria know that the justification for the attack is a lie. For the NATO puppets, Washington's money overwhelms integrity, for which the rewards are low. The Russians certainly know that Washington is lying. The Russian Foreign Minister LaRue said, the Assad government, as the opposition is saying openly, is enjoying military success on the ground. The Assad regime isn't driven to the wall. What sense is there for the regime, to use chemical arms especially in such small amounts? Larouf is a relatively civilized person in the role of Russia's main diplomat. However, other Russian officials can be more pointed in their dismissal of Washington's latest blatant lies. Yuri Shekov, an aide to Russian President Putin said, The Americans tried to present us with the information on the use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime, but frankly we thought that it was not convincing. We wouldn't like to invoke references to the infamous lies of Secretary of State Powell at the unalleging Iraqi WMD, but the facts don't look convincing in our eyes. Alexei Pushkov, the chairman of the Russian Duma's Foreign Affairs Committee, cut to the chase. The data about Assad's use of chemical weapons is fabricated by the same facility that made up the lies about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. 
Obama is walking George W. W. Bush's path. Here in America no one will ever hear straight talk like this from the United States prostitutes. Orwellian double speak is now the language of the United States government. Secretary of State John Kerry condemned Assad for harming peace talks, while the United States arms its Syrian mercenaries. Washington's double speak is now obvious to the world. Not only Assad, but also the Russians, Chinese, Iranians, and every the United States puppet state, which includes all of NATO and Japan, are fully aware that Washington is again lying through its teeth. The Russians, Chinese, and Iranians are trying to avoid confrontation with Washington, as war with the modern nuclear weapons would destroy all life on planet Earth. What is striking is that despite 24-7 brainwashing by the prostitutes, a large majority of the American population opposes Obama's war on Syria. This is good news. It means more Americans are developing the ability to think independently of the lies Washington feeds to them. What the Nyakin Nazis, the Bush-Obama regime, and the prostitute media have made clear is that Washington is going to push its agenda of world hegemony to the point of starting World War III, which, of course, means the end of life on Earth. Russia and China, either one of which can destroy the United States, have learned that the United States government is a liar and cannot be trusted. The Libyan no-fly policy to which Russia and China agreed turned out to be a NATO air attack on the Libyan army so that the CIA-sponsored mercenaries could prevail. Russia and China, having learned their lesson, are protesting Washington's assault on Syria, that Washington pretends is a civil war. If Syria falls, Russia and China know that Iran is next. Iran is Russia's underbelly, and for China Iran is 20% of its energy imports. Both Russian and Chinese governments know that after Iran falls, they are next. There is no other explanation for Washington surrounding Russia with missile bases, and surrounding China with naval and air bases. Both Russia and China are now preparing for the war that they see as inevitable. Washington's crazed, demented drive for world hegemony is bringing unsuspecting Americans up against two countries with hydrogen bombs, whose combined population is five times the United States population. In such a conflict everyone dies. Considering the utterly insane government ruling in Washington, if human life exists in 2020, it will be a miracle. All the worry about future Medicare and Social Security deficits is meaningless. There will be no one here to collect the benefits. Addendum, if the report below from RT is accurate, it seems obvious that the ignorant and evil denizens of Washington, D.C., are driving the world to World War III. HTTP, RT com news Iran troop deployment Syria 782 Addendum, Russia says it will not allow Syria no-fly zones HTTP www.inforumationcleariengh is in full article 35,318 htm addendum. Once again Washington demonstrates that it is home to the most stupid people on earth. HTTP www.independent.co.uk News World Middle East Iran to send 4,000 troops to aid President Assad forces in Syria 8,660,358 HTML.